I put my stuff on. Um, we're going to go to the scripture first. And uh, we're going to go to Habakkuk chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. And we're going to go to verse 3. You know I like those weird books of the Bible nobody refers to. Because there's a lot of interesting things in them that we miss out on. Right. Because we gloss over it, we don't think it's pertinent for today. But it's pertinent for tonight. It's pertinent for this generation in this day. So Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1 says, I will stand up on my watch and set me up on the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. I'm building a foundation. And I'm going to read all the scriptures before I start with the objects lesson. Because I don't want you to forget anything about tonight. Because it's important in this day and this generation that we know how to go to war. All right. All right. Because tonight's about moving in the miraculous in our work clothes. All right. You see, I have pretty shoes on right now. And they look pretty. But by the time service is over, I won't have pretty shoes on now. Because if we're going to do battle, and if I'm going to have to dodge bullets to preach the gospel and run under fences of countries, I have to have on the right clothes to do that. Okay? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able of the wicked yeah. and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God yeah. praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance right. and supplication for all saints. Right. Pastor Zimmerman if you would pray please. Father we thank you for your word and we thank you Lord that your word is anointed. Now we ask that you would anoint Sister Smith as she brings forth the word that you have placed it in her heart. Uh, I pray God that you would anoint our ears and our minds that we might hear, understand, and receive your word and apply it to our lives. Now in Jesus' name we thank you for it. Amen. 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 Y'all can be seated. Hallelujah. You see, we got to prepare for battle. Yeah. If we want the enemy to be ashes under our feet, we can't right. just go to war. We can't just say, I surrender all and expect it to right. all be perfect. All right. You say, I surrender all, you put a target on your back yeah. for the devil to attack. All right. And you see, we lose a lot of people because they're not prepared for the attack. It's time for the church to be taught how to deal with the attacks and how to move forward so that we can move in the miraculous the way the Lord wants us to. The reason I had angels meet me in the Middle East at the airport was because I had on the proper war clothes. I was prepared for battle. Even exhausted, the angels led me where I needed to go and planted me where I needed to be planted because I was so tired I did not know how to move forward. But God did. So he sent two angels to take care of me so that I would be able to move the way he wanted me to move. Yes, we should be seeing angels. No, we should not seek to see angels more than we seek God. But we should be seeing them. We should be talking to them. We should be hearing from them. Can you tell God is burning in my soul? He started burning in my soul a couple of days ago. when it, it, The thought kind of flitters through my mind. Brother Kilgore always told me that's when a message is taking root. That's when something is changing. And you're going to preach or minister something that's going to be life changing for someone. But you see, you've got to learn how to walk in the war clothes. You've got to learn how to carry them on your back. So that they don't stop you from what you're doing. They're not limiting my ministry tonight. They're not limiting the way I'm preaching. The backpack probably weighs close to 60 pounds. The camera case probably 10. And my purse probably 20. And the Bible. But you see, I've learned how important it is. You see, when I'm overseas, and I've been those places where if they'd have caught me, they'd kill me. They'd probably raped me first and beat me up. And then they'd have killed me. But in those places, 
it says when I would get up to preach, my backpack sat at the pulpit. All so right. if I had to tuck tail and run, all I had to do was grab it. And everything that was important to me was in that backpack. I could leave the suitcases behind. But I would not leave the backpack if at all possible. All right. I would grab it as I ran. And it would be carried with me. You see, I've got to be comfortable with my work clothes on. Yeah. And the church isn't comfortable in work clothes. All right. We're used to prosperity. We're used to not having to battle yeah, for anything Go much. Ahead. Oh, we think we battle. There's a man I'll introduce you to someday in heaven that I preached a message in his church in India about persecution. Six months later, he had died of persecution. My, my, my. He had been chained to the post in his village and whipped naked many times. And after I found that out, I was like, really, God? You want me to preach to this guy about persecution? I don't have a clue. I really don't have a clue what he's going through. I had no idea. But God had something he wanted to flow out of me that would minister to him so that when he was persecuted the last time, it would be in his mind and he would remember that. All right. But you see, if I hadn't had my work clothes on, if I had to struggle to put them on, That's I, right. I would have lost the battle. I wouldn't have been prepared. Right. So when I'm studying scriptures, I'm going to take some of this off now because when you go through security, bless the Lord, you get to strip. And you see, the first thing I need, and as I'm standing there, is my passport. It's in there. If I can get it out. You all will bear with me a minute. It's important. The Lord wanted me to do this so you wouldn't forget. Go ahead. You see, the reason I got held up in the Middle East is Passport didn't have enough empty pages. Now I have a new one that no pages have been used in. And in six years, God filled that passport up. Amen. In six years, with no money, God filled my passport up. Mm -hmm. All the different countries I went, all the different places I went. But you see, just like for our country, we have to have a passport to go to another country. That's right. And right now, these American passports are dirt. Yeah. We can't get into but eight countries right now because of COVID. Usually this passport is one of the golden ones, yeah. but it's not anymore. Uh -huh. You know, what if we don't have the scripture in us? What if we don't have the word of God in us? Mama. What if our kids don't know that in James chapter 4, they call for the elders of the church and pray? All right. What if they don't know that verse? The prayers of a righteous man have much. Yeah. What if they don't know something? fundamental scriptures that will lead them and hold them with what's getting ready to happen in this country. Right. I've always said it. I've said it for years, and Pastor Kreitz or Bishop Kreitz has heard me say it, and Brother Zimmerman has too, because I've known him longer than Brother Kreitz. They've heard me say something bad's going to have to happen in this country to bring it to its knees. Amen. COVID was just, just yeah, so. it was just a sneeze. That's right. right. Full-blown pneumonia is better than us. But are we ready for full blown pneumonia? Are we ready to be beat for the gospel? Wow. Are we ready to be shot at if we preach? Are we ready to walk through protesters, Bishop, to get into the church Amen. because they're outside our doors and they're saying that we don't support Black Lives Matter? Are we ready to walk through them? Are we ready? Do we have enough of Jesus? Passport's a simple thing. Memorizing scripture is a simple thing. You know, they started me in Sunday school in the first uh, Pentecostal church of Tunnel West Virginia. And you know what? My parent, my mama and my daddy, even though my daddy didn't go to church, if I got home and I didn't know that scripture, I got beat. So those scriptures, they're memorized. <laughs> I learned real quick how to memorize scriptures. And Sunday school was to get to supper. But when I got home, it was so I wouldn't get beat. Wow. Because my mama made it important, which made my daddy make it important. And you didn't want him taking his belt off. You didn't want him looking at his belt. To look at it meant he was taking it off. If he had to glance at it, it was coming off. And you see, we get upset when God chastises us a little bit. When he shoves us a little bit and says, hey, don't do that. You know better. We get upset, don't we? What if God told you? Like he told me yesterday. I went into Dollar General to get some things. And I get in the car and I pull out. And God says, you need to turn around and go back. And I said, no, thank you. I'm tired. I'm going to the apartment. I'm going to rest. I'm driving down the road. 
and God would not let me be. So I turned my boat around and I took myself back to the Dollar General. He wanted me to invite the girl who checked me out to church, who's from Baltimore. All right. That's what God wanted me to do. No, I, I don't know that she came this morning because with my glasses off, I can't see far. And so that's, I, I don't need them to read. So when they're off work, I'm blind almost. But God knew she needed me to come back. All right. You see, I don't need to know why. We don't need to know why when God gives us that nudge to stop or to turn around. Or maybe even to pray in a public place. God forbid. Yeah. Like we did Friday yeah. when Deanna got the Holy Ghost at the gas pumps or prayed back through to the Holy Ghost at the gas pumps. How many of you would have obeyed God and done that? Right. I'm here to ask you because we're getting to the place where that's going to become everyday procedure. Yep. And we've got to wake up. The church has got to wake up and realize that we have the power within us to combat anything right. that comes against us right. when we say, in the name of Jesus. That's our most powerful weapon other than the word of God. Yeah. So let me right. go on. Well, first, and I'm probably going to do it out of order if I don't look at my notes. Because I want to do it in order. So bear with me. Sure. Okay? Go ahead. So we know what we're wrestling against. Because we see it every day. God forbid you say anything against homosexuality. Yeah. God forbid. Yeah. And as a minister, a licensed minister, if I perform a wedding, I can probably be brought up in charges in Maryland if I refuse to marry a couple mm -hmm. of the same sex. Right. So I'm just not performing weddings. Don't ask. Okay? And I'll pray. We'll let we'll let him do that. I'm he can go to jail. Go to jail. <laughs> I'm not. No, no. I meant you can do the regular weddings, and they can send you to jail. I'll stay out of jail as long as possible. I'll stay out of jail as long as possible. But anyway, so what we need to do is we got to take the whole armor of God so that we can stand. And it says, "And having done all to stand, because there's going to be times, and there have been times that I stood there and I said, Lord." Am I going to get through this? All right. Is this man going to let me through security? All right. Like the time I was in India and my Bible where I have it marked up and I have the colored pencils on top of it usually when I go through security. And I laid it and it came through and the pencils were on it. And he said, ma'am, what are these for? You see, all their airports are military controlled. And they're carrying M-16s. You get the woman fuzzies. And I said, oh, they're for this. And something, I don't know if it was Susie being rebellious or if it was the Holy Ghost. But I opened my Bible and I began to flip. And he said, shut that book. And I kept flipping. It was like I couldn't stop. He was afraid of the word of God. And he had the M16. All I had was this. This is all we need. That's right, sir. The Bible tells me that God honors his word above his name. Right. Yep. The name of Jesus is important. This, oh, this is more important. It's important that we have this hidden in our hearts if we want to truly walk in the miraculous. All right. If you just want a normal, surface Christian life, God bless you. Don't let the door hit you or the good Lord switch you. <laughs> and I'm serious. We ain't got time for people playing church no more. No. You got to want it. You got to want it. It's time to get right. I mean, we've heard it for decades. God is coming back again. Well, guess what? He really is now. He really is. You can see what I see when I travel. Planes with one world government written on them. They're brainwashing us little bit by little bit as we go through airports and as we go into countries. And you sit here thinking nothing's going to happen. Thinking you're okay. So you have to talk to your brother or your sister in the Lord. Because y'all got a little fuss or a little tiff. Really? You think you're going to go to heaven? Mm -mm. Ouch. I got news for you. Forget walking in the miraculous. You ain't even going to walk streets of gold. That's exactly right. My Bible tells me to forget, be forgiven. We have to forgive. That's what this book teaches me. But do you know that? Do you really know that? Do you know it enough that it will change you? That it will change how you interact with people? All right. And that you will just let it slough off you and say, okay, Jesus, they hurt me. Heal my wounds. Mm -hmm. Jesus, help me. There have been people I've had to do that. Sure. And today, God is bringing them back into my life in new ways. 
Because I gave it to Jesus, I'm able to talk to them, I'm able to work with them, I'm able to help them. And yeah, I may get mad and throw my phone across the room sometimes. Because I'm human. As long as I pick it up and I say, Jesus. Oh, all right. God help me to be like you. Try working disaster relief of a hurricane when everybody's working 18 hours a day. And I sit on the phone for five in the afternoon until midnight on conference calls. People are on load trucks at midnight. You get on the conference call and they're tired and you're sitting in. There's nothing personal. But you see, we don't take into consideration the battle somebody may have fought. We don't look at where they're at. No, we're, we're righteous. So they, they have to measure up to our standard. Yeah. Really? What if Jesus measured you by your own standard? Uh -oh. Ouch. Really? What if he did? He's really worked on me about a lot of things. I have a lot of time by myself because of all the travel. And during those many hours by myself, that's why I've written so many books. It's because God gets me alone and he starts talking. And I have nothing to do but listen. All right. But I've created an environment for God to speak to me. What kind of environment have you created? Is it an environment of country music, rock and roll, the media, movies, yeah. Netflix, Roku, Facebook, TikTok? What kind of environment have you created for God? Go ahead. You haven't seen angels? You haven't heard the voice of God speak to you through his word? Or or, or, or verbally, you want to walk in the miraculous. You got to get in His glory. You got to change your life. All right. The church needs to repent. Amen. And if you're here and you're lost, you need to repent. Amen. And God's got a great gift of joy, peace, and happiness Amen. for you tonight. Amen. But if you're saved and you're here, or if you think you're saved, you see, God's given me. The most wonderful ministry of being the most unpopular evangelist in the United Pentecostal Church. Because I come in and I say, hey, what are you hiding under that rug? What's in that car you're driving? What do you got hidden that you don't want nobody to know about? What are you doing in the dark that nobody knows? Yep, right. Tell me what you're doing. Because Jesus knows. And if you have the Holy Ghost, I'm going to take holiness to a whole new level tonight. If you have the Holy Ghost, every time you sin, and if you're unmarried, every time you have sex with your boyfriend or girlfriend, guess what? You just made Jesus do that with you because he lives inside of you. we got to take sin to the place where it belongs, and we got to measure it by the same post that God measures it by, not by the post that we measure it. Sorry, I get on this bandwagon. Sorry. In foreign countries, they have to come speak about holiness to their young people. And it gets a lot more graphic than what I just said. I go very specifically with what types of sex. Because they always have questions, well, this isn't wrong, or that isn't wrong. I said, well, then one part of your anatomy or their part of that anatomy, if it did, it's wrong. It's sin. Right. It's simple. Read the Bible. There's a chapter on sex. Yes, but have we ever heard it read to our young people? No. Have we ever heard it taught to them? No. Then why do we get upset when our girls pop up pregnant? Oh, they need taught. Yes, they need to understand that in marriage it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it's pleasurable. But outside of marriage, it's sin and it will send you straight to hell. But somebody here does. And if you're doing this or engaging in this, you need to stop. You need to repent. And you need to clean your life up. No excuses, like Pastor said this morning. No the time for excuses is over. The time for pretty preaching is over. Right. If you don't get it right, you'll go to hell. Let me explain to you what hell is. Weeping and nudging and wailing. Flames licking your feet. You know, when I pray in churches, when I walk in and the spirit of rebellion hits me at the door, because I sense that they, well, when the spirit of rebellion hits me, I know they don't have holiness. That's true. Yeah. I go in their prayer rooms, and this is how I pray. I pray, God, let the flames of hell lick their feet 
Don't you dare give them dreams or vision. You give them nightmares. You wake them up in the middle of the night filling the flames of hell until they get this church back on the right track with you. He said, it's time for some hard old fashioned preaching that says, you're not going to like this, but that's okay. All right. I'm here to snatch you from the flames of hell. I'm not here to make you feel good. Right. Okay, I need to get back to my notes. I promised I'd be short, and I'm already halfway through the short. So, gotta hurry. Okay, stand therefore, having your loins covered about with truth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Yes. It's your prayers. To me, that's what it means. It's my prayers. It's having this so deep in me that when I pray, the words just come out and I just quote. I thank God that your word says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You gotta have the word. You got to know. That's how Daniel, me, and Meshach and Abednego were able to walk into the fiery furnace. That's how Daniel was able to stand up and say, I can't eat that. I can't touch that. Because if I touch that, you see, I'll make my God. I'll make God angry. Just give me three weeks to prove to you yeah. that I'll look better and I'll feel better without, right. with it, without whatever that is the devil's offering me. Yeah. Because he'll offer it to you. And it'll look pretty. Sure. And when you pop up pregnant, a few years into it, you'll be wishing to God you would listen to the preacher. Because those dreams you had, they'll be delayed 20 or 30 years if you live that long. And I don't really think we have that long. I'm being honest. I really, I think it's sooner than any of us think. But we haven't seen that last great revival. But you see, if I can get the church woke up and the church mobilized, right, right, you right, can't start right. bringing people through a Walmart, at the dollar store, at the gas pumps, in yeah. the doctor's offices. Right. You think that's not going to create a stir in your communities? Go ahead. That's going to create a stir. People are going to wonder what's going on. Yes, They're going to want to know what you have. Right. Isn't it time for us to be the church? It is time. Amen. So let me go on with this. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yep. You see, I got some comfortable shoes back here. If you'll come help me. Oh. And you see in the backpack while we're getting the shoes on, because we've got to have the preparation of the gospel of peace. Um, the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see, when we minister to people with our, when we have all of our war clothes on, uh -huh. we have to be prepared. Our socks are the mercy for our feet. We have to have mercy involved. We have to have love involved. I hate to say this, but there's some of you guys, I wouldn't want you to talk to my kids. Oh. Because you'd send them straight to hell. Oh my. You'd look at Jason's man bun, and you'd look at my daughter's piercings, and you'd look at those tattoos. Ah. You'd look at those holy blue jeans on her. Yeah, go ahead. And you'd say, oh, if they touch my children, they'll hurt them. My goodness. But you see, if we put mercy on them, then we talk to them differently. Yeah. We tell them how much we love them. We tell them, you know, Jesus still loves you. Right. I've seen pictures of you shouting at your mother post on Facebook. No, no. I've seen pictures of you where God's really touched you. I remember hearing you sing and seeing you do sign language in church. And that anointing that God put on you is still there. And you see, then we're able to slide All the preparation right. of the gospel of peace yeah, yeah, on yeah. their feet because they would memorize scriptures. They spent time learning the word of God. They could probably quote it better than some of the young people sitting here. Because their mama made sure that they were in the prayer room before church. What if we made the sanctuary for 30 minutes before service prayer? What if we made it a place of prayer and preparation for the service? And just as she's serving me, we need to serve the lost. All right. You see, 
She's listening and she's obeying. And because of that, God will honor her obedience. Okay. And we've got to have love. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. No question. If my daughter walked in here in her Daisy Duke shorts, her top that her mother cringes when I see her in it. How would you treat her? What would you say to her? Go ahead. At my husband's funeral, she wore shorts and she spoke. She didn't wear Daisy Duke shorts. They were knickers or something. But she wore a top that was very revealing. Nobody said anything to her. Brother Kraft had flown in from Mississippi to do his funeral. But everyone was kind to my and I was so wrapped up in my grief, I didn't really realize what she had said behind the pulpit. And she cursed behind the pulpit mm -hmm. at the injustice of her father killing himself. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Go ahead. Jesus still loves her. Absolutely. He died on the cross. Absolutely right. And the reason I'm telling you this is you've got family members who have done similar things, maybe not behind the pulpit. But they've done similar things. And have you? Have you ever had God to put mercy on your feet before you start talking about the gospel? Have you allowed God to let you love them the way he loves them? Or are you too stuck in being right and righteous? I got That you push them away because as soon as they walk in the door, you start preaching about holiness and about God and about church. When all it should be is love. Amen. I love you, baby. Right. That's what Jesus does. He says, I love you. That's right. See, we've got to be sure of this if we want to walk in the miraculous. Amen. And our families are the ones who really know us. Amen. They know our words. They know our problems. Right. I'd be afraid to hand my children a microphone to introduce me. <laughs> There's no telling what might come out of their mouths. <laughs> but one thing Leah said yesterday, and I mentioned it this morning at her party, birthday party yesterday we went to. She said, I've missed so many birthday parties that my mama prepared for me. So many good meals. And I was too stuck and too selfish to come home to eat the food. Tell me that's a prodigal out ready to walk through the door. Amen. I tell you she's not ready to come home. For her to say something like that. And Sister Sherwood was with me. And I looked at it and I said, baby, there's a new sheriff in town now. Yeah. We're not discussing the past anymore. We're going to talk about today. And we're going to have fun today because we're having a party today. God's got me in restoration. All right. But in restoration, we can either be bitter about our past. Right. Or we can love others because of our past. All right. And we can let what's happened to us allow us to love people. All right. So let's talk about the backpack. One thing we can't ever forget is the oil of the Holy Ghost. Y'all know I love my big bottles of oil. This is a small one for me. That's true. Don't leave home without it. Make sure your oil is full. Make sure your lamps are full. Because you never know when you're going to run into a hungry backslider. And that Bible that you were too busy to read this morning may be just what they need if you had read it. So you need to make sure your oil is full. Amen. You see, we got to have everything we need in this backpack. And I usually use this. We have to have sustenance. <laughs> Y'all know I like my food. Yeah. And my pencils. Because that's how I study the Word of God. Whatever tools I need to study this book need to be with me and easy access. So that I can study that Word and I can get it in my heart. All right. And then, you see, this is a four terabyte, or an eight terabyte hard drive. I take a few pictures. Uh, so I travel with an eight terabyte hard drive. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> anyway, what's on your hard drive? Yep. What's in your memory banks? Yep. You see, we've got to understand this is a lot more than what it has been. It's okay to have been surface for a while. But Jesus has had enough. And if the, the church of the name of Jesus does not wake up, this will pass us by. 
because others are baptizing each other in Jesus' name in their bathtubs, and they are finding the truth. True. They are multiplying left and right. Just because they're not in our doors does not mean there's not a revival happening. Amen. So I'm here to tell you, you've got to clean your hard drive. Go ahead. You've got to get rid of the movies and the memories. Yes. If you've got memories of your parents abusing you, and I've been there, I've been abused, I get it. You've got to forgive them. Amen. You're not forgiving them for them, you're forgiving them for you. I... And when you forgive them for you, you, you'll be amazed at the change in your life that will happen. Anything that's happened to you in your past, you've got to forgive. I've had people walk up to me and say, the man who murdered my parents is about to be executed, and I want to see him die. Oh. But I've been like, well, Lord, what do we say? What do we say? Well, yeah, we tell him what Jesus would do. We tell them it's not for them. The best thing they can do for their parents is to forgive. Amen. Because in forgiveness, they will find peace. Amen. In forgiveness, the nightmares will disappear mm -hmm. of what they've been told or the pictures they may have seen of the murder scene. Or if you've been raped. Or any of these horrible things have happened to you. I don't know why God's making me talk about this, but I believe tonight's about cleaning out. All right. It's about getting our hard drive in so we All can right. fill it back up. You see, and when we fill it back up, the one thing we have to remember is that for our phones and stuff, we better have memory banks. Right. Extra power. Yes. If you don't have a prayer life, just like this memory bank is dead, it's about 1%. Sure. It won't charge nothing. If you don't pray, if you don't read the word of God, you got nothing. That's right. Yeah, I believe if you call on the name of Jesus, he will come through for you. But, if you want to pray somebody through, shouldn't you be prayed through first? Absolutely. Shouldn't you be on fire for God first? Absolutely. And those that don't think speaking in tongues is important, let me speak to you a minute. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Tongues is the symbol of the Holy Ghost, welling up within you and bubbling out. If you don't speak in it, do you have anything in you to bubble out? I don't want to sit next to somebody and there's bubble out on me. Thank you very much. I'll do my own bubble. <laughs> and you've seen me. You've seen me shout all over the front of the church. You've heard me tell about when I went to the church last Saturday night and I danced all over that church because God told me to. No, I didn't feel nothing when I started. But because I obeyed my God, by the time I finished, I was having a time. No music, no nothing. Just me and Jesus. <laughs> it's time. For the church to wake up and realize the things that we need in order to be successful. Just like that hard drive sitting right there. We can't clean out our hard drives by ourselves. We need access to the power source. No access, no power. I want power. I want more power with God than I've ever had. I want more of him than anybody else has ever had. You see, when God told me that he was going to restore me after pancreatic cancer, I remember I laid there and I prayed and I read Job 42.10 where it talks about Job being restored to twice when he prayed for his friends. I said, oh, no, God, you ain't doing no double nothing for me. I want four times. I've been to hell and back many times. I want four times whatever you gave Job. I want four times whatever you gave Sister Freeman. I don't want just a little bit of the power of God. I want all I can get. And we need a church that's that hungry for more of God. And we do anything he tells us to do. Even change shoes in the middle of a message. Amen. Okay, now let me go on. Oh yeah, can't forget our sugar. Our zero. Okay, and the other thing is this. Why is this important? This is how I memorize scripture. I'm going to leave all this on the altar so you can look at it later. You'll see scriptures rewritten, passages of scripture, seven times each for seven days. Seven times each for seven days. Every day. Or I try to do it every day. Lately I haven't been that great. But God's getting me back in it because he flipped the switch from rest to turbo. If he's flipped the switch from rest to turbo, 
That means he's going to be doing something with me that I'm not always going to have access to what I need to have access to. And if I'm in a prison cell, I need to have the word of God in my heart. I need to remember Deuteronomy 6 and 4, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. I need to be able to quote to somebody Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then I need to go back to Joel 2, 28 and 29, and I need to quote it to them. I need to tell them how the Bible ties together and prove to them that there's only one God and his name is Jesus and that he's a jealous God. And I need to tell them where that's found in the word of God. I need to be able to write that down for them. All right. Yes, I realize some people have trouble memorizing. Well, just start writing it down because I found out something when I started preaching and when God started having me do this in Africa. Found out something. I'd be preaching. And scriptures that I couldn't quote for you, if you ask me to quote, when I'm under the anointing, it just flows out of my mouth. Because that's just God. That's the way it is. Because I kept doing it. I, it didn't matter whether it worked or not in the flesh. If it works in the spirit, that's what matters. It has to work in the spirit. And then, a laptop. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2. If you'll throw that up on the screen, please. And it says, it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Today we have iPads and we have laptops. We need to be writing what God wants us to write instead of all that stupid stuff we're posting on social media. We need to be sharing the gospel because we don't realize who's watching it. I didn't realize until I was in Ghana how many people were reading the stuff I post and somehow getting the videos changed. You can sit down and sign Thank you. And in that next verse, it talks about waiting. Like she sat there and she waited. You see, we've been waiting for Jesus to come back for a mighty long time. We've been waiting to be endued with more power than we've ever seen. We've been waiting to move in the miraculous. We've been waiting to see more miracle signs and wonders than Jesus ever did. Because that's what the Bible tells us will happen in the last days. Amen. And if he raised the dead to life, should we not be raising the dead to life faster? Remember that vision three years ago? Yes. Remember that? Remember Sister Kraft called me about a dream that she had that matched the vision? Wow. Remember that? Wow. We're about to see it happen, I believe. Amen. I don't know what's going to have to happen in order for that to come true. But I do know that God, when he makes a promise, it comes true. You can yeah. stand on it. You can walk on it because this will happen. And my goodness, before my Amen. husband, when at 19 years of marriage, we had just found out that I might have pancreatic cancer. When I sat on that couch that night and that angel sat down beside me and told me that I was going to get very, very sick and it was going to get really, really bad, but that I would make it. You know, it was easy to believe that. The other part was what wasn't easy. She said, you're going to have to encourage your husband. And I laughed. And I was like, or if he, your husband wasn't husband, it was he was going to have to encourage me. That's what it was. He was going to, because I was the one who saw the glasses half full, and he saw it as half empty. I was like, there's no way. That's not how this works. Because you see, I believe in God, and he's a backslider. He's not going to have to encourage me. But God knew what was coming. All right. He knew I was going to kill myself. Oh my. He knew I was going to walk to that bridge that night and jump off of it. And it was the oh bridge. My. He knew I was going to do that. Because you get tired after a while of watching your kids see a pick you up and lay you on the ground and roll you out of your house. And you don't know if it's going to be the last time. You see, God knew what he was getting ready to do in my life. He knew my husband was going to have to encourage me. When I walked down that porch that night, and I told him what God said, and we just cried and yelled at each other. And it was the next day we were sent from one doctor's office to another doctor's office. But it was through that that God brought me from a surface relationship to a deep relationship. Yes. Sister Zimmerman, it was at the ladies' conference where Sister Joe Strand spoke that I was at and my hair was coming back in. And at the time, we didn't know God had healed me yet. I'd been sent home on hospice to die. Very few people knew that. I had the drugs with me and my breathing became labored in the night for someone to give me a shot. Mm. So that I would pass peaceably and not struggle. Yeah, it's real nice in the tag teenage kids, not that. Mm. But it was through that. You see, God cleared my debts. He cleared them so he could talk to me. 
If you don't listen to this crazy old woman preacher tonight, God can clear your deck so you will listen to him. He can put you flat on your back in a hospital so there's nothing for you to do but listen. For two years, I was flat on my back or in chemo chairs. For two years, and God had a lot to say. And I had all kinds of time to listen. And it's because of that today I'm the way I am. It's because of that today I'm reaching like I reach. And I'm determined to wake up the church because I know you're living service. I'm preaching to me 10 years ago. I'm preaching to me. Sitting on that pew saying, oh, this is okay. Don't ever find out I did this or I let my kids do that. Really? Well, what about Jesus? Let's forget the pastor finding out. Let's talk about Jesus. He sees all. He hears all. He's everywhere. I want you to go to bed and dream about that a lot. Dream about how you're going to fix it with Jesus. Because if you let your kids do some stuff, you've opened your home up to spirits. And once they get in your house and you've entertained them, good luck getting them out. Unless you get on fire for God. And you anoint your house with some oil and you go through it and you do some dancing and you do some shouting and you put the devil on notice that his reign is over. Yes, right. I had my kids at the prayer room when they were growing up. We lived in North Carolina when I worked at the bank and I was a vice president. I had my kids in prayer room. Oh, yeah. But you see, I talked to them about careers and about getting a good education so they could get a good job. I didn't push Bible college. I didn't push ministry. I pushed you to get a good job so you can pass something in this life. So you can be comfortable. And that's what we've pushed in America. I have news for you. Our economy is about to fall. You're about to lose it all. Good luck. You'll be lucky if you feed your kids. What are you going to do then? The Bible says, woe to them that get stuck in that thing. That's what the Word of God says. Do we believe the Word of God? Are we going to change our lives tonight, or are we just going to pretend everything's okay? All right. I'm sick of people saying everything's okay. Well, it's not okay. All right. You see, what y'all don't know is I was extremely sick in the bathroom right before church. Started as soon as I headed this way. You want to know why? I know why. It's called a spiritual attack. Yes. It had nothing to do with my body. It had to do with the fact the devil did not want me to talk straight with you and tell you that it's time we get right with God if we really want to walk in the miraculous. And I don't know that a lot of you want to because you're going to have to straighten some things out. you got to put your work clothes on, but before you can put your work clothes on, there's got to be a sacrifice on the altar. There's got to be some repentance. That's right. And then you will be able to put your work clothes on. You see, the last thing we're going to talk about is this little bag. It's very important. I don't usually carry it. Usually everything's stuffed in the backpack because the planes, they're pretty specific about what you take on and take out of the planes. And you see, this bag is where the cameras are. Yeah, I need it like that. This little bag is probably the most important piece other than the cam actual cameras. This is full of memory cards. I bet you I've got another eight terabyte in this little bag pictures because I hand my cameras out like candy overseas because God said to document it. That's why I post so many pictures on Facebook. I want people to see what God is doing. I want people to know that if little old Susie Wine from Phillipsville, West Virginia can step out of the boat on water and walk on water with Jesus, guess what? You can too. All right. You might just cross the street in your neighborhood or you might just go next door or down the road. But you can do here what's done overseas, and it's time for it to come here. You know what I was asked the last time I was in Africa? Sister Smith, I think we need to send missionaries to America. Wow. Talk about embarrassed. I said, yeah, I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, they need to come. Greatest country in the world. Sent missionaries all over the world and were going to hell in a handbasket, as my grandma would say. Nobody wants to talk about it. We just want to do fluff. Fluff's over, baby. Fluff's over. 
you got to get right with God. you got to fix this. As much as this is about living in the miraculous, I'm more concerned for your souls tonight. I'm more concerned to see you shout when you leave praise and worship than to see the microphone in your hand. Because that means you've had some prayer time in Christ. I want to see more from the church. I want to see it like in Africa where they come and dance, where they come and worship, or where they show up and they sleep on the floor all night when they know the missionary is there so that they can be there for two or three days. Amen. And they don't even know where the food's coming from and half the time the missionary who's there, which is probably me, doesn't know where the money's coming from to pay for the food. But in the night, somebody will PayPal me and God will provide. And I say, if you can get me somewhere, we can get this money transferred and you can get the food for them. See, they come not knowing whether they're even going to eat. Walk miles. Sleep wherever they have to. And we can't come sit on padded pews. We can't come pray in air conditioned homes. We don't even have a prayer room in our home. You want to know why your kids aren't going to heaven? Have they heard you pray? Have they heard you travail for them? Have you woke them up with travail? You want to know why my kids aren't in church? Right here. It's my fault. Yeah, I made sure they were in the prayer room. But did I read my Bible through while they were home? Yeah, I said a prayer in the car on the way to the school as I dropped them off. I got news for you, that's not. All right. If we want to move in the miraculous, we've got to get the kids. We've got to wake them up. If the Lord says you're going to be the next me, what will you do with the gospel? Take my Bible. What will you do with my Bible? What will you do with what God's in you? Will you walk in it or will you run from it? Only you can make that decision, not me. It's not about who can do it. It's about how close can I get to Jesus? And the closer we get to Him, that's when we get in the miraculous. Because the closer we get to Him, the more we want to please Him. And the more we will put our work clothes on more willingly. And we will walk and we will be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I've got a few more things and I've got to stop. I'm sorry, I've gone too long. But I believe this is what the Lord wanted tonight. And we have to have the shield of faith. Now that's one thing I had when I had cancer. I had faith. I believed that whatever God said he would do, he would do. And if he said I was going to make it, I was going to make it. Until two years in, when it the ambulance was at my house every other week. And I was the patient. They were hauling me out. And I remember praying, God, please take it. I can't look at my son's eyes one more time and see hopelessness. I don't want him to grow up hopeless. So either heal me or kill me. Took me a while to figure out he's hunted the you. You see, I'm here tonight to say, isn't it time we get close to Jesus? Yeah. So that we can move in the miraculous, really close to Jesus. So close that we want to spend time, hold up the Bible, reading his love letters. That's those are love letters from Jesus to us. That's right. If you had a love letter from your boyfriend, Maddie, would you read it? Yeah. I know you don't have a boyfriend, but if you had a boyfriend. Yeah, you'd read it. You'd read it till you wore it out. I know, I did. Why are we wearing our Bibles? If he magnifies his word above his name, why aren't we wearing out Bibles? I want to read Malachi 4, 2, and 2 through 4, or 1 through 4 in closing. I'm going to read it in two versions of the Bible. First, I'm going to read it in the King James for those of us that love the King James. And then I'm going to read it to you in the message version. It says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud day, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, whoa, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked. 
For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel with statutes and judgment. Then the message verse. I like this. It says, count on it. The day is coming. Raging like a forest fire. All the arrogant people who do evil things will be burned up like stone wood, burned to a crisp. Nothing left but scorched earth and ash. A black day. But for you, sunrise, the sun of righteousness will dawn on those who honor my name, healing radiating from its wings. You will be bursting with energy like colts, crispy and frolicking, and you'll tramp on the wicked. There'll be nothing but ashes under your feet on that day. God of the angel armies says so. So what does all this have to do with moving in the miraculous? Well, that's everything. And right here, when I get to heaven, this is one thing I don't have to care. Just a few medicines I get to take to keep me from pushing up daisies. And that's not all of them. Some of them are in my purse. All right. We're to be wise as serpents and harmless as Absolutely dogs. Absolutely right. But for far too long. All we've wanted to prove is that we were right. Yep. So true. We all have friends who have been in the church a long time who won't darken a church door because of the way they were treated. Yep. That's true. But God's getting ready to let us show love to them yes. in a way they haven't seen love from the church. All right. I want to be one that shows them grace and mercy. Yes. Even if it was me, they hurt. Even if it was me, they tried to destroy. I want to be one that shows love and grace to them and speaks to them like Jesus would. I don't open my mouth like I would when they curse at me. I just open my mouth and then they do apologize afterwards. I say, well, that's okay. You're not in church. I don't, I don't hold you to that. I don't hold you to that. I understand. And I just wrap my arms around them and hug them. When I met Jason in November with his man bug and his tattoos, I was in shock. My daughter could have won. That would have been the nice thing she'd done before I walked in. But that would have been too easy. And as I was meeting him and his children and sharing Thanksgiving with my new family, I, uh, God talked to me. And at the end, when I went to hug him, because his kids were started calling me Granny immediately. And when I went to hug him as I laughed, I, I hugged him great day and I said, Jason, I want you to know I love you, buddy. I just don't agree with the way you live. I preach against this. I, I can't condone it. I'm sorry, I can't. But I will never say anything about it in front of your children. I will respect you because I love you and I hope someday to be in church with you. Right. He stood there and he wept as he hugged me. And this weekend when he, when I was talking to him and his mama says, did you hear what Jason said? I said, no, what did he say? And he said, I'm eight months sober today. And I turned to him and I said, congratulations, I'm so happy. And I was about to shout. <laughs> you see all the beer they took in at Christmas, you would have shouted too. I was like, thank God. Thank God. That's a miracle. Because of a prayer I prayed as I walked in that house and I saw all that beer going in. And I didn't pray it out loud. I just said it in my mind. And I said, dear God, I work for you and you're going to make me put up with this at Christmas? You can stop this, can't you? Just a couple weeks later, I had a DUI. Forced to ride. Did you know you can pray like that? And God will move. Yes, when those angels arrived, it was because of my passport not having empty pages. I thought I had empty pages, and I didn't. They were for something else. And when I walked away from that line, I was about to cry because I was exhausted. And I said, really, God? I thought I worked for you. Can't you fix this? Aren't you the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? And I said, damn, did God fix it. He had angels take me to the plane. I didn't recognize them as angels, although they talked to me about rest. And they made weird comments that should have clued me in, but I was too tired. You gotta clean your lives out, folks. You gotta get rid of all the business. 
if you want God to talk to you. You gotta get rid of the noise. The media, the TVs, the movies. And no, I'm not preaching against TV. I'm just talking about when you let it control you instead of you controlling it. Sure. Okay? Now, if you're watching stuff, you should. You realize that when you watch that stuff in your living room, you're making Jesus watch you. So when you pick up a book to read it, or when you turn on the TV, you need to ask yourself, I've got the Holy Ghost. What am I making Jesus do right now? Let's sing. There's healing in his wings. That's what the scripture says. You see, God gave me that verse on a plane from Thailand to the Philippines. And that poor man that was sitting beside me, he didn't know what hit me. <laughs> I started weeping and talking in tongues. And Sister Shaw was across the way. We tried to be seated together, but they wouldn't work with us, so it was their fault. And so I went over to her and I said, I got to show you. She goes, Susie, I'm preparing for the first service. I said, I know. But God wants you to know what's going to happen when we land in the Philippines. See, because we were there to pray for an open door to China. We were there to pray some things into the Philippines. Some specific things. Just like we went to the Capitol a few weeks ago. The U.S. Capitol. And we were there to see things happen for God. And I said, God just told me that they're dust under our feet. So if our enemies are dust under our feet, no matter what happens with this election, no matter what happens with our food supply, they're dust under our feet. And if he needs to send a raven to feed us, he will, just like he's done for me the past few months since I got back from Botswana and I was sitting at home doing nothing. Sure. And when an evangelist doesn't minister, an evangelist has no funds. But God sent people. He laid them, he laid me on their hearts. I met one pastor at a gas station in this state, and he handed me an envelope with a thousand dollars, Bishop. He didn't know how desperate I was. Praise God. He didn't know how close my lights were to being shut off. He had no clue because I don't tell people. I trust Jesus to provide. Either he's God or he's not. Either he'll do it or he won't. I'm here to tell you tonight, he's going to do it. All right. If the church will get rid of the stupid stuff, get rid of the pretty shoes. And Maddie, I love your shoes. But honey, if they're keeping you from shouting, put on a pair of tennis shoes and get up there and sing so that you can worship God. It's more important we worship God than that we have the pretty shoes. I've always said I didn't want to be the pretty vessel on the shelf that they look at new and over. I want to be that old ugly cast iron skillet that God grabs and says, I can use you because I seasoned you. I can take you places. I can't take other people. How many of you are seasoned? Yeah, you've had things happen to you. And I've really got to close. I'm sorry, Brother Christ. You said you'd clean up after me. So. I'll let you. Your pastor. I love you, by the way. <laughs> I love you too, sis. <laughs> We've worked together a long time. That's yes. why I'm free to speak with him that way. Amen. Sure. I wouldn't do that with just any pastor. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you that if we'll clean up our lives first, God wants to do something miraculous in this area. And we, or when I was on the phone with Jason Cisco three years ago when I was here, and we talked about this location, and he told me it was pivotal. To the revival starting in the United States. That's of true. Because of the Eastern Continental Divide, mm -hmm. the three states, the Mason Dixie line. His words to me when he called me back after three days was, My God, sis, do you know where you are? And I said, Kind of like when I answered him in Kenya and I was in the witch headquarters, I told him the name of the village I was at. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I know where I am. What do you mean? And he said, Well, I'm looking at Google Earth and you don't understand what God has to do there. Mm -hmm. And when it starts there, yeah. it's going to be like Azusa Street. It's going to go from one end of this nation to the other. There you go. That's, you see, but we got to get it. we got to understand God wants to use us. Right. He wants to use us to be the new Azusa Street right. for this generation and this day. We're close enough to Washington, D.C. that they come here. Jesus? 
Or as soon as you hit the front door, you hit that remote. The TV comes on. And you sit down to watch your show that comes on. You wish this lady would shut up because you know Brother Christ still has to preach. <laughs> I'm picking him. And you know he's not short-winded either. So, I just can't. Yeah. No, I'm there. But you know what? It's time we quit worrying about the clock. And we worry about what God wants to do. We let God move. You know, since I've come back this time, I feel as free as I do in Africa. All right. And if God would tell me to speak a word of prophecy to you, Lexi, I'd do it. I wouldn't have a bit of problem doing it. If it was something bad, I'd come to you privately. But I wouldn't have a bit of a problem doing it. Because it's time for us to have people prophesy in church again. It's time. But you see, first we've got to have people who pray and who are available to God. Who are willing to clean themselves out so God can use them in the miraculous. Absolutely. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I want you to think. I want you to look at your life realistically and put it up to the mirror of Jesus. Could he use you? Could he use you? Based on your relationship at this second with God. All right. Could he use you? Right now. Or do you have a bunch of junk in your trunk? That if we knew about it, we probably wouldn't even want to talk to you. All right. I want you to think about it. And those of you that look right, oh, baby, you ain't right. It's not about looking right. we got to get it in here first. All right. And then it shows outwardly through our consecration. Yeah. And I believe outward holiness is essential to salvation. Yeah. Because I believe it takes us deeper with God. I believe because of the way I dress that I have more power with God. Because it's a personal consecration between me and Him. Amen. You will never hear me preach. You will go to hell because of the way you dress. But I will preach. You will never have the relationship with God that you could have because of what you do at the beach and because of how you dress when you think nobody sees you. All right. You think we don't see those beach pictures you post on Facebook? <laughs> really? Are you that stupid? You think we don't see you taking your kids to dance classes? Really? Are we that dumb? Have you researched Beethoven? Have you researched some of the mu classical music you listen to that you think's okay? Have you researched the essential oils? I walk the streets in Massachusetts in uh, the witch area. I can't think of the name of Salem. Salem, yeah, they let me lead that prayer. Yeah. And then we let us take seven people that day. And the day before, the district superintendent in Rhode Island, they would have 30 people. I had seven. And I was in the witch headquarters. And we walked the streets and we prayed. But you know what we learned? I learned that in the witch gift shops, guess what they sell? Essential oils. I'm not against them, okay? I'm just saying you better research where you're buying them from. You better know where they're coming from because there may have been spells put on those. That's right. And you better know what you're bringing in that house of yours. Amen. Because it'll attack your babies through their dreams. True. And then you'll have to be explaining some things that you wish you'd never had to explain. Yes. I'm not saying be scared of everything. I'm saying be wise. All you have to do is Google. Hello, Google. That's all you have to do is ask Google. Wait, look at the name of the company. Who's behind this company? What do they believe? Who are they linked to? Use your brains. That's what God's wanting us to do tonight. And then he's going to move in the miraculous. We, we get this all fixed. That revival that Brother Christ has been talking about for a few years. A few. Of those hundreds and thousands of people. Yep. Oh, and then he'll just keep me here forever probably. Because he, somebody will have to be here to help baptize people. <laughs> But you see, you guys can baptize people too. That's right. All you need is water. Right. My Bible tells me what does hinder you. Right. Have you baptized anybody in Jesus' name? It's a wonderful feeling. Just if they're real big ladies, make sure there's a man behind them. I almost lost some men in Africa. <laughs> I almost lost me too. <laughs> Just make sure you got somebody behind them to help pull them up. 
And I wanted to end this on a happy note and not on a sad note. Because I want you to think about it. Messages like these are things you take home. Sure. Things you think about. Sure. Because it's in your private prayer closet that the changes have to be made. Not in front of us. Not in front of us. Between you and Jesus. And yeah, we'll want you to pray at the altar tonight. Because you should. Because heaven forbid you'd have a car wreck on the way home. You see, I used to go to church where they would prophesy for people. And one young man didn't come pray for Christ. Guess what? Trained in his car. Had his funeral three days later. It's time for the church to wake up. It's time for us to start having people feeling free enough to do those types of things in church. To prophesy. For the ministry to not feel like there's going to be a million knives coming out of you as you walk out of the building. I love Jesus. I fell in love with him. And that's really where the problem lies. When you fall in love with Jesus, getting rid of some things or making sure you got some stuff with you, it's not an issue. You just make sure you pack. You can ask Sister Sherwood. She's watched me pack for Africa before. And I'd be putting Bibles in books to give out when I get there to teach from. And I'd have food I had bought for me to have something to eat because, well, I'm a picky eater. The Lord picked the wrong person to go to Africa. Anyway, I get skinny. And as we're packing, I'm like, wait, and we pick it up and I weigh it. And the most it can weigh is 70 pounds. And that's paying an extra $250 a suitcase. And that's cheaper than shipping. And also it gets there with me instead of seven weeks later. And I'm picking it up. And I'm like, we've got to take stuff out. And first it's the food that we jar of peanut butter weighs too much. You know, then it's chip. You know, well, the chips don't weigh much. But then it's other stuff that weighs. And then it's the clothes. And I remember one time she said, do you have enough clothes to wear? And I said, if I have to, I'll wear five layers when I get on the plane. And that'll be a week's worth of clothes. And I'll just take them off layer by layer over a period of five days. Because I love Jesus more than I love my comfort. I love Jesus more than anything. Do you? Elijah, what if God asked you to just get up and go get on a plane and take nothing with you? That first time I went to Africa with $50, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just following Jesus because I fell in love with him. Let's pray. God, we love you tonight.